All right, we're live. All right, well, it's arrived. I got my Set Power PT35 dual zone cooler here with multiple power sources. Um, before I unbox it here, let's take a look at some of the stats on the side. You can see here it's a PT35. It's got around 37 quarts or 35 liters of capacity. It's 12 volt and 24 volt. It weighs around 38 pounds, this whole package here. And uh, it's 24 inches long and it comes in a box that's uh, 28 inches here. So fairly sizable box. Let's get into it. Hey, at the end of this video, I'm gonna include a link to this product and a discount code so you can get 16% off the price with this product. I stand by my reviews and I stand by this review 100%. I was not paid to give a good review. I did notice that when the box arrived, it had some damage to it. But the good news is, is they packed it with a really heavy styrofoam. So even though the box was broken here, the styrofoam was the only part that was really exposed. That's good. First look. Let's get this thing out of the box so we can look at it. The base is extra thick here too, so you can tell the bottom took some hits and it held up really well. And there it is. It's got vents along the bottom. Here's the display. Let's take a look inside. You can tell here, I, I guess uh, it's got very thick walls, so there's a little less space inside than I thought from looking on the outside, but that's because the walls are extra insulated, which is gonna save us energy and be more efficient. So it looks like we have two zones here for cooling, each separate zone here. How much battery uh, protection is on, we'll have to figure out how that works. And the compressor speed, we're gonna learn how this all works together. Inside is an accessory box. And then we've got this small side here and this large size here. So I can see probably using this for freezer more and, and this for fridge. It has a little guide so you can figure out where you should set your temperature. And a troubleshooting guide. So that's right there on a sticker. So it's always with you when you travel. You don't have to carry a manual alongside it just to troubleshoot. I like that. So far, the handles feel durable, feel pretty solid. The top feels like a traditional cooler top, fairly lightweight. But, uh, you know, heat rises, so you don't want to necessarily over insulate the top, I imagine. We've got our seal around here. So I'm guessing when this pulls in tight, yep, that. Seems to be pretty tight in there. So we've got a good seal on this side too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pulling on it right here. And it's got a pretty good seal. It's not rattling around, so that's good. Let's take a look what's inside the box. Aha. We've got the user manual. We'll be going through that in a minute. And then we've got adapters here, folks. Then it has the car adapter, AC adapter, plugs in here. So we've got this AC setup, and this looks like the proprietary plug that you plug in. And this is where the proprietary plug 
goes into. So we'll make sure to read the instructions here before we start running it. Now we've got the people who come across this package must be the happiest people in the world, but I am certainly happy. Looks like it's got a three year warranty on the compressor and a one year for the other parts. So pretty standard. You're entitled to a replacement or a refund for a major failure or compensation for any other foreseeable loss or damage. Uh, and there's the rest of the information inside on the warranty. And then it comes with the manual. I'm happy to say the manual seems pretty straightforward here. We're not bombarded with 13 pages of warnings. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh, pretty clear instructions here. So we'll be going through that in just a moment. It's important that you don't start this up for at least 24 hours after it's been upright. This is a refrigerator. So you want to make sure you keep it upright as much as possible. And if it was shipped to you or put on its side, wait 24 hours for the compressor and fluids and everything to settle before you use it. Well, I'm going to go through the instructions and then we're going to go ahead and light this up and see how it, how long it takes to cool. I'm excited. Okay, so we've got the cooler ready to test. The display is fairly simple and intuitive. You have a left bin and a right bin. It shows you the temperature that it currently is at. When you press the up and down arrows, it will adjust the target temperature. Each one will light up one at a time, showing you whether the left side or the right side is cooling down. It doesn't seem to cool down both sections at once, but oscillates between the two. The battery protection section allows you to protect your battery if it starts getting low. So this basically is how aggressive do you want the battery protection to be, whether you want a high level of battery protection or a low level. Make sure you read the instructions to understand how that works. The compressor speed, to be honest, so far I've left it at max, but you can reduce the draw by going to a minimum compressor speed. Uh, being that I had frozen stuff and dairy, I wanted to keep it at its maximum uh, effectiveness, but at some point I'll experiment with the minimum function. The on off button is pretty simple and self-explanatory. So we have two different ways to power this. We've got the car charger and we've got the wall charger. So these are our two options. Customer here in my testing lab, or my garage. We're gonna start cooling this thing down using the wall and we're gonna time how long it takes to get down to an acceptable temperature. So I've plugged this in to an extension cord. All right. Now admittedly, I've messed around with this a little bit already, but we've got it fired up here. Uh, it's currently 23 degrees Celsius on the left side and it looks like it's around 15 degrees Celsius on the right side. I'm gonna set this to be one degree Celsius, so it's just above freezing temperature. That's gonna be the large side here. And then the uh, smaller side, I'm gonna set that to be minus 18. So this is gonna make it quite freezing. I wanna be able to throw ice cream in there and have it stay cold. Ice cream is the ultimate test of this cooler. When we're out road tripping and camping, it's like the one thing that you can't buy unless you're really close to your RV. When your RV is maybe, you know, 15, 20 minutes outside of town and it's the middle of a hot summer, this is gonna bring the ice cream back to camp. So now that we just started it, I'm gonna come back every 10 minutes to see how long does it take to cool down. So let's start counting now. Siri set timer for 10 minutes. So we're 10 minutes in and the right side is all the way down to one degree already. And we've got it down to 11 degrees on the left side. Now it does move back and forth, it appears, so it seems to cool one side and the other, and it goes back and forth. I'm trying to see how fast will this thing cool down. And so far, that's pretty fast. Let's check back in another 10 minutes. Siri, set timer for 10 minutes. Okay, here we are. We are 10 more minutes in, and the right side is, is holding at one, one degree Celsius, just above freezing. And the uh, left side, the smaller side, is now down to a negative 11. So technically I could already put frozen stuff in there, but I'm gonna let it see how long it takes to get down. Siri set timer for 10 minutes. And I just stopped the uh, clock two minutes early. So at eight minutes I came out of here and checked and it's already down to negative 18. So technically the left and right side are cool enough. I've noticed the compressor is turned off and neither of them say cooling. I've got this set to high battery protection. That doesn't really matter when I'm plugged into the wall. And of course I have max and min here and generally I'm gonna run it at max to get it cooled down. I might run it at minimum if it's already packed with food and it's not a very hot day. And the, I can just hear the compressor just turned on again so it's gonna keep it cool. And when I reach in here, it is quite cool. 
very much so. Point out that there's actually lights inside here, so when you lift it up, there's got a little fridge light on each side. That's a nice little feature, especially when it's nighttime and you're reaching in your cooler. Now it dropped down a couple of degrees because I was just left leaving it open there for photos. And you can see it's pretty deep there. to give it a little bit of time so I could actually take this out into the field. You'll be seeing a lot more about this cooler in the coming videos that I did, but I wanted to take it out there before I gave it my final first review here. And I'll tell you, this thing performed well above my expectations. Here in RVing Joe, I like to boil everything down to three basic characteristics. One, is it easy to use? Two, is it fully functional or does it maximize the functionality for the dollars that I'm spending? And three, is it durable? Does it seem like it's a durable product? I'll tell you what, it scored high in all three categories. As far as ease of use, this thing was very simple. I gave it a four out of five. The reason I gave it such a high score is generally it is really easy to use uh, when you want to set the battery protection level, if you want to set the compressor to high or low, you want to set the temperature, whether it's in Celsius or Fahrenheit, it was all very simple. You turn it on, you turn it off. That's the way I like my appliances and tools, simple. As far as functionality, it was extremely functional. Uh, this thing cools down really fast. It surprised me how fast it would cool down. And it seemed to cool down just as fast whether I was plugged in a 12 volt or AC. So this thing just performed at the top of its game no matter how I was powering it. It held its cooling, so when I would take it, say, down to the beach, which we did at one point, everything stayed quite cold the whole time. It has really thick walls like you're seeing in modern day coolers. This is not your typical cooler from the 80s and the 90s. This thing is thick and modern. It is highly efficient, and it really holds that temperature when we would unplug it. And durability, this thing is strong. This thing feels really solid. I do think eventually the plastic little tabs that keep the top uh, clamped down, I have a feeling those will be the first to go, but they still seem pretty strong. But everything feels heavy duty. The handles are nice and thick. They're not held on by a small junction point. The top is rubberized, which is really great because my dogs are jumping on top of the cooler at times and they're able to keep their footing. It's not just a rough plastic surface, but actually a smooth rubberized platform. So when you set things on top, they stay there. I've already taken this in and out of my truck a good dozen times and I've carried it all the way down to a beach and brought it back. This thing feels as solid as I could ever expect. So in the end, I gave it a very high rating because I'm really impressed with this product. Some of the YouTubers I follow actually use this one and so I was so excited. It'll likely live most of its life in the back of our truck. We basically have a fridge in our truck on demand when we want to. This makes it a lot easier when we go shop. Sometimes we're a good hour from downtown Vancouver and when we're in Vancouver, which has a lot of specialty foods, I have to very strategically plan if I'm going to bring that food home, how are we going to keep it cold for an hour or two? Never a thought anymore. Whether it's frozen or whether it needs to be refrigerated, we can just throw it in the cooler. Now my dogs are losing a little space to their back seat. My dogs have traditionally had the entire super crew back seat to themselves. Now they're gonna have to share some space with our cooler. Like I said at the beginning, I have a discount code. If you use this discount below and you go to the link in my description, that will allow you to get a 16% discount on this product. So it's already a great value for the dollar and now it got 16% better. So make sure you use the discount code RVing with Joe. I want to thank Set Power for sending this my way. I'm absolutely going to enjoy using it. And I stand by this review 100%. I was not paid to give a good review. I stand by my reviews. And this is a solid product.